The warming has been continuous with the exception of what's been hidden temporarily, toxically, by climate engineering. And the negative effects from climate engineering now far outweigh any perceived benefits from these programs. It's simply a way to mask the severity of what's unfolding until the last possible moment. So what happened when the planet started to warm again because there was the buildup of greenhouse gases continuing to occur? The geoengineers doubled down. And the warmer it gets, the more they double down. And this is simply like trying to put out a fire with buckets of gas, George. So it's the same approach in the medical industry, right? Don't we see that? We see it all the time. Same approach. Just take more pharmaceuticals. If the ones you're taking aren't working, you need to take more. And that's. And now we're talking about on a planetary scale. So uh, 1945 is when the programs appeared to have been deployed in earnest, and it shows up immediately on global temperature records. How did you get involved with this, Dane? Never wanted this battle. I'm not, not political. I state that often. And I've never been any sort of an activist. But when I built my home in the Pacific Northwest expecting to find clean air, a fully off-grid home, I'm on wind, solar, and hydro. And when I began to lose massive amounts of my solar power uptake, that's my background with mm -hmm. power, from whatever these aircraft were emitting with not a natural cloud in the sky, that is not condensation. It's impossible. And when I began to research and found the mountains of data, on climate engineering, geoengineering, began to test my rain, my precipitation, finding the same elements in the rain that were listed in the patents, climbing steadily with every precipitation event. The more they sprayed, the more visible, the more power I lost, the more aluminum that showed up in my rain, and I couldn't look the other way once I knew. Would you say most big cities in the United States are the victims of being sprayed? As in being um, focused on, if yeah. you will? No, I wouldn't say that. Now, Although, so just targeted key areas, or, or what? Although, with, with this caveat, because some of the temperature readings are taken from those larger urban areas, there may be some focus to try to lower those temperatures for afternoon highs, if you will, in order to try to mask some of the severity uh. of the warming that's occurring. And in regard to the warming, we've just passed, I, I believe, the 380th consecutive month of above normal global temperatures. I, and I know everybody's divided on this issue because we all know that there's people making money off climate change. Right? Oh, yeah. We know that, right? Absolutely. So what I would ask people to consider is people make money off of wars, right, George? <laughs> Both sides Just a little bit. They, they, they make money, the same people make money off both sides of the conflict. But does that mean the wars didn't happen? Does that mean people didn't die? No. The wars happened and people died, and the same is true here. Yes, we have disaster capitalists making money off of what's happening with the climate. But that doesn't mean the damage is not real. That doesn't mean the danger is not real. So Monsanto can make all the aluminum resistant seeds they want, all the UV resistant seeds they want, all the drought resistant seeds they want. When the ship goes down, it won't matter, will it? Has anybody filed suit against any organization or entity claiming that they got sick because of this? There are a number of claims. The legal team that works directly with geoengineeringwatch.org has filed in Canada in March of 2016. Uh, we filed a 60-day notice of intent to file a lawsuit already in the U.S. Our legal team has, but we have not filed the actual complaint yet because we're still tightening it up, uh, m making sure it's uh, completely bulletproof. But this is interesting, George. Within, within about three hours of our legal team filing a 60-day notice of pending lawsuit, I heard from the head of the National Academy of Sciences, Marsha McNutt, within three hours. They're certainly watching everything we're doing. They're obviously going to do everything they can to keep this issue from coming to light. Because what would you do, George, or people that you know, if this comes to light and in a way that the, the masses truly wake up and they realize the experiment they've been exposed to, permanently damaging their health, their environment, their atmosphere, their planet, was done without their knowledge or consent, how do you think they're going to react? They're not going to be too happy about it, Dane. Pitchforks and torches. And some legalese, too. Yeah. We'll see what they do. I want to talk about HARP for a moment, and then uh, we'll start taking calls at the half here. And we're going to keep you next hour for some more phone calls. Is that okay? Good to go. HARP. Of course, Nick Begich has been a genius when it comes to that. But what do you think is, is going on there in Alaska? Well, 
George, you remember about two years ago, there was a lot of publicity that they were going to close Harp down, and that proved the quote-unquote conspiracy. Yep, and defund it. That's right. That's what they claimed. Did that happen? No. Nope. And at geoengineeringwatch.org, we, we held from day one to the conclusion that this was nothing but a red herring, nothing but a ploy. It's exactly what it was. Now Harp has not only been continuously funded, but it's been retrofitted, upgraded with some improvements. Uh, they're not about to shut that down. And, and right now, with the severity of climate unraveling that we're seeing, and these headlines that we've seen in, in recent weeks and months will continue to escalate in severity. We have a climate system that's coming apart. We have a power structure that's unimaginably desperate. And, George, as some of your show alluded to before we got in the air with the climate engineering, the, the push for World War III, that's the final card the power structure has to play when they have no other options, when the planetary implosion manifests to the degree that the economic escalations, which your show also talked about, the, the 21,000 record mark, they can artificially inflate the stock market all they want. When the biosphere implodes, that's the end of the line. Nature has historically provided 75% of all global GDP for free, no longer. You can't artificially inflate an economy without an environment that produces and that environment is now collapsing on every front. So what's the final card they have left to play? Global conflict. Do you think that's going to happen for sure? I think that they will do everything they can to make it happen. If it doesn't happen, it's because enough people wake up, enough of our brothers and sisters in the military understand that this is a road. The road we're on mathematically leads to certain near-term global omnicide. It's a mathematical fact. We're in the sixth great mass extinction now. We're losing... Two to three hundred species of plant, animal, and insect a day to extinction. Two thirds of all life forms that existed on the planet before the dawn of civilization are expected to be extinct by 2020. We're there. It's not off on the horizon somewhere. It's here now. And the only reason shelves in the U.S. are stocked up, George, and your listeners can look this up as well. The U.S. is importing tens of billions of dollars worth of food from abroad tens of billions of dollars to keep our shelves stocked, to keep the populations pacified until the last possible moment. These are scary times if these things happen, Dane. Only asking people to investigate, not asking to believe me. Yeah, but you believe it. No, I, it's not a matter of what I believe. I'm simply looking at statistical data from credible frontline sources, and I'm asking people to use their sense of reason and do some real investigation and not think just because McDonald's is selling Big Macs and Walmart's open that everything's fine. Why don't they stop? Well, if they were to stop, if, I'm not blaming everything on climate engineering. Understand that there's, right. there's countless sources of anthropogenic damage to the planet, George. We've, we've cut down or destroyed over 3 trillion trees. Colorado right now just published, published statistics. Nearly a billion trees dead in Colorado, but we've lost... 3.4 trillion trees since the dawn of civilization. So we've cut down the trees, we've paved the planet, we've poisoned the oceans, we've done a lot of damage. We've not been good stewards. But in regard to climate engineering, they're not about to let go out of, of that weapon of power. It's an addiction, is it not, George? Power? Absolute power corrupts. That's exactly right. And so do we see a, a drug addict willing to stop because he knows he's harming himself? Probably not. No, we don't. So uh, it's, it's up to us. Again, uh, I think the, the best chance we have, George, is to, if we work together, share credible, verifiable frontline data with others, reach critical mass of awareness, wake up our military brothers and sisters. We're going to open up the phone lines for a couple reasons early with Dane Wigington. One, perhaps you've been a witness to some of this. This new resilient ridge is a direct result of, again, global network of ionosphere heaters like HARP, like the HARP facility in Alaska. These installations can and are creating massive high-pressure zones. When the massively powerful radio frequency microwave transmissions, millions of watts, are focused on regions of the upper atmosphere, specifically the ionosphere, the transmissions cause an electrical chain reaction in the ionosphere, which radically heats that layer. The expanding bubble of heated atmosphere pushes up and down. The downward push is the creation of the high-pressure dome. This is not speculation. The U.S. military has long since admitted to the existence of such facilities. The stated purpose of heating the atmosphere 
and creating the expanding regions I just covered is this, to create resistance to a potential incoming ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile, and thus to reportedly defend against it. But the blatantly obvious climate modification use is never mentioned. What else do the high pressure zones allow the weather makers to do? These zones allow them to steer the upper level wind currents, the jet stream. Why would they want to do that, many ask? The upper level winds are the key to steering and controlling the weather. That's exactly what they're doing. Back to the ridiculously resilient ridge in California. This ionosphere heater induced high pressure dome spins clockwise in the atmosphere like a giant gear in the climate system. The jet stream must spin around it, up and over it, and then back down in the lower 48 states further to the east of the fried and dried west coast. This creates a massive dip in the jet stream. Welcome to the recently named polar vortex. This is how this is constructed. The climate science communities make up the terms as they go in order to cover the tracks of the climate engineers and to give legitimacy to the newly created scenarios that are directly related to climate engineering. By the way, this includes the naming of about a dozen and a half new clouds that apparently never existed before. When you give a name to the cloud, like Undulatus apparatus, sounds very official, sounds very natural and scientific, even though it's a result of climate engineering. The population accepts that and thus is all too happy to stay in their denial, not noticing the otherworldly skies above their heads every day with jet aircraft spewing toxic aerosols into the sky to modify the climate. Now to connect all that I've just described, to so-called winter storm Benji, which was just engineered to bring a small shot of patented chemically ice-nucleated snow to the most populated regions of the U.S. and the East Coast. This snow is created with moisture drawn straight from the record warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. How does that work out exactly? Here's how. The jet stream spins clockwise, as I stated. In, in the western U.S., jet stream goes up and around that rotates it back downward around a counterclockwise rotating low pressure zone again high and low pressure zones created with ionosphere heaters and aerosol operations this low pressure zone spins counterclockwise so picture a fan on the front of a car with a fan belt spinning around various wheels and that's exactly what you have happening with the jet stream spinning up and over the high pressure in the west back down spinning counterclockwise around the low pressure like a gear with a fan belt around it that low pressure picks up moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, and that moisture is then streamed up through the southeast along the east coast of the U.S. The moisture is then saturated with patented chemical ice nucleating elements. You can search this on geoengineeringwatch.org, by the way. Search geoengineeringwatch.org, chemical ice nucleation for weather modification, or geoengineeringwatch.org, engineering winter snowstorms, etc. But the, the chemical ice nucleation... Short-term exposure can lead to anything from stomach to chest pains. Long-term exposure causes blood pressure problems. Ryan addressed concerns by chemtrail researchers that barium could be meant to wear down a person's immune system. We're talking about dominating our air supply without the human consent. In a, in a way that is, is difficult for many of us certainly to conceive, and certainly many of us refuse to accept it, even in the light of sufficient and overwhelming evidence. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Good, Dave. Thank you. Um, I, just right quick, uh, doctor answered my question a few minutes ago about possibly having the thing on the, uh, the airlines and being able to push a button or something and they don't even know. But now that I'm thinking about, you know, uh, doctor, you're talking about the one world government thing. I mean, how do these people protect their cells from what they're spraying if that is truly what's going on? I mean, well, I think the, the, that's a good question. And I think that the, the first thing is they don't know what the health risks are. 
They probably have a filtration <laughs> system in their houses or something. Well, they could have a, a really super filtration system. But most people uh, don't know that with secret programs, you have compartmentalization and need to know. And so most people probably that are doing this probably do not know what the risks are. Uh, in the first instance, and in the second instance, people just want to do their jobs, and and they, they even if it means a risk, because if they were to demand uh, special equipment or uh, or bulk at the at the health risk, they might lose their jobs. Uh, so it's 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 a complicated situation, but if the it, it's a system that can only thrive when there's secrecy and when there is disinformation. Will they ever take a break now when the virus just keeps spraying? Well, you know, once in a while there'll be a, a couple of days, and you'll think, well, maybe they stopped, and then they come in with vengeance. They sure do. Give out your website again, Marv. NuclearPlanet.com. Super. Marv, thank you so much for being on the program. Keep in touch. Have yourself a great time. Yeah, white streaks fly back. Got the time lapse so I can capture the blast. He is the proof for the confused news. You want a pair of puppets in the pie in the sky. It's all water vapor. Why would they lie? Little ice crystals hanging out because it's dry. Profit motive. It's slow so they don't realize. Living in a fog like a bump on a log. Don't you worry, spray text on the job. Keep your mind closed, not loose on a tether. Which one you like, which proof is better? Dennis Kucinich made a mess. In-house resolution 2977 PC weather modification I got revealed Kevin Falcone didn't wanna keep it real Modification ain't getting old in Alberta See the clouds, you may